Hello everyone, welcome to this course. So today I will start chapter six, which is about uh, determinants. So today I'm gonna start uh, first talking about uh, the reason we study determinants, I mean, one of the reason, and then I will start some definitions which are required to define the determinant itself. Okay, let's start. So, if you remember from the previous chapter, we learned that a two by two matrix is invertible if and only if uh, this numerical value is not zero. So basically we could easily determine the invertibility of this two by two matrix by computing a numerical value using the entries. So in this chapter, our, one of our goal is to generalize this result to larger matrices. Okay, first, just to emphasize, uh, determinant of the determinant of a matrix is indeed a number. Don't forget that, which is computed from entries of uh, the, a given square matrix. We define determinant only for square matrices. So. Uh, so in this chapter, we will see the relation between uh, the determinant of a n by a matrix and the invertibility of the same matrix. Okay, let's start. Cofactor expansion, 6.1.1. First, let me talk about the notation we use for determinants. So for a given n by n matrix A, the determinant of A is denoted by, either you denote it by DET bracket A, or you use two vertical bars to show the determinant. Okay, definition 6.1.1. Let A be a one by one matrix. Okay, very simple matrix, only one entry then the determinant of A is just that one entry. Okay, so we, we already defined determinant of a one by one matrix. Now to define determinant of larger matrices, we need a couple of definitions, like one of them is called minor, there's one more cofactor, and we'll see. So definition 6.1.2, minor. Okay, assume you have a n by n matrix uh, where n, and it's called A, where n is greater or equal to two. Then the ij minor of A, so the ij minor of A, which is denoted by mij. Sometimes we call it the minor of A corresponding to Aij. So we have one one minor, we have one two minor, we have one three minor. Basically we have uh, uh, the minor of the matrix which correspond to each given entry inside the matrix. Okay, so, and the notation is Mij, is denoted, is defined to be the determinant of uh, uh, a smaller matrix. Let me explain like this, okay? It, it, may, it will be easier if I... So, assume that the matrix A is given, okay? So, so this is the matrix A. Now, what we do is we take the i throw and we remove it, and we remove the j, j, j column of the matrix A, we end up with a matrix which is smaller than A. So it's n minus one by n minus one. And then we compute the determinant of this new smaller matrix. And then the numerical value that we obtain is, is called the ij minor of A, okay? So for example, if you want to compute the one, one minor, you have to look at this entry, you have to remove the first row and the first column. 
One, two, you have to remove the first row and the second column and keep going. Don't worry, when we do an example, you understand much better. Now let's look at the cofactor of the entry ij. Similar to the minor, we have again the definition 6.1.3 cofactor. The cofactor of a, an entry or the entry ij, aij, I'm sorry, is denoted by, first of all, cij and how do we define that? This is the way we define it. So C I J equals minus one I plus J and then the minor. Again, C I J is also a number. So you see C I J is almost same as M I J, except you have to multiply M I J by negative one I plus J. Okay, again, to understand, uh, please pay attention carefully to example 6.1.1, then you understand minor and cofactor much better. Let A be a two by two matrix with entries one, minus two, three, two. Find the cofactors C11, C12, C22. Of course, there's one more cofactor, which is C21 but the question is asking us to compute only three of them. Okay, let's start. Because this is the first example, I write all the details. So C11, let's follow the definition. That's same as minus one, one plus one, M11. One, one. Okay, so I is one, J is one. And this becomes minus one squared is just plus one, yes? So I, I, I like to write squared. And then what is M11? Let's just look at this definition to see how to compute M11. So determ the determinant of, you just copy the matrix A, and then we have to remove a certain row and column. How do you determine that? One shows first row, one shows first column. So remove them. Then you end up with what? You end up with minus one squared is positive, determinant of just a one by one matrix. So the determinant of the one by one matrix A. So the answer is two. That is C11. Let's compute C12. So minus one, one plus two, M12. That is minus the determinant of, again, we have to copy the whole matrix, and then we have to remove it. the first row and the second column we end up with minus the determinant of three. But according to what we had in this definition, when you have a determinant of a one by one matrix, the answer is just the entry, so minus three. And as the last cofactor, which we're supposed to compute, we have C22 is negative one, two plus two, M22, two, two, the minor. So negative one on top four is positive. So we have to just compute the determinant of copy the matrix. Then we have to remove a row and a column. Which one? Well, here. The second row, the second column. So this becomes, I, I would like to explain a slightly, a slightly different viewpoint. You say C22 corresponds to A22. Let me find A22. It's right here. This is the entry 
which is in the second row and second column. And then you can remove the row that contains that and the column containing that highlighted, uh, uh, yellow highlighted entry. So this is nothing, just one. Okay, so basically we learned what is the minor of a matrix corresponding to a certain entry. And we learned how to compute the cofactor of a matrix, again, corresponding to an entry. Okay, great. That's enough for today. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, talk to you later.